Welcome back everybody to another review. So today I'm bringing you a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. Now there's going to be some more stuff that's going to come back behind this that will show what this is and I'm going to compare it to show two different things that you can use. They're locally made here. One is locally made in the Philippines and one is not. And with that, um, the item definitely is not from the Philippines. It's a listed item from overseas and the other item inside my package which i will not show will be released or revealed at a later date so with that what we're going to do is we're going to see what i got inside of this package bring it down do a build on it and then we're going to put it in so i'm going to give you a sneak peek of what it goes for so this goes to one of two things that you can use and those two items will be very, very simple if I can find where my drip tip went. Um, I lost my drip tip. No, I didn't. I found it. Okay. So, all right. So, one, it goes into one of these. A billet box or a borrow device. Or, in my case, I can also put it on one of these. A mod. This is the Ares 217 by BC Customs by Matt Bennett. And I can also install it into this right here. This little thing right here is called the Throne Tank. This is made here in the Philippines by Ground Cloud Innovations by XJ Opina. You can see the review on that in the channel along with the hair RBA right here. So, oh, do you have an idea what we're going to be going over today with? So, with that, let's go ahead, open up this package right here in front of you because I am not going to reveal everything inside the package. Um, I've taken some stuff off the package just so that way it wasn't seen. And yes, that's right. I'm going to be secretive on some things. Um... All right, so there we go. So there's that. All right, so we set that bag down there. And we're going to open this up on camera. See that? That little card in the back. That little styrofoam thing with tape. Now, I save these because I like to ship people stuff back and good stuff so you're taken care of so your stuff don't come into you damaged. All right. Awesome. Well, this is one thing I really, really am very, very happy I got. This is something that's amazing. I wish I had a couple more. I, I may have to message them and see if I can get them to send me some more of these. But I got a battery wrap. If you're not, under, you're not familiar with it, battery wraps are very big for safety, for running stuff. So that's a big shout out to... Hellfire Mods. That's right. The Addy Smith. Hellfire. This product contains nicotine, which is a highly addictive substance. This warning only applies when the product is used with a nicotine-containing liquid. So see, there you go. If you do not have nicotine in it. Oh, wait. Another one fell out. I got two battery pack. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm going to wrap up me two batteries. All right. So let's go and put that over to the side. Love it. So basically, they're right. This is from the UK. That's right, UK. So you can imagine, this came from the water. So Hellfire Mods. So with that, what we're going to do is we're going to dive down. I'm going to show you what's inside the packet. I'm going to build this in front of you. And then I'm going to show you what my ohms are on this build. And from there, we're going to bring it back up on top, vape on it, and talk about it. So I will see you down low. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's get that out of here. All right, so little zipper pack. Let's open her up. Let's see what's inside so we can talk about this. Ooh, look at that presentation. Okay, so as you can see, we have a very weird shaped oblong <laughs> device. <laughs> Looks like an egg, but <laughs> this is the chimney section. 
If you're not familiar with the chimney section, here you go. This is a piece where the screw screws down and seals down and your drip tip comes up on top based on whatever it is. Let's go ahead and lighten this up because we are a little too dark. Um, so you can see better. Okay, there you go. So right there is the chimney section for it. And the screw goes in, like I said, and the drip tip comes up on top. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So let's hit that right there. Then you have your build deck right here. Now this is what they call your 510 or your oming piece. So really simple to understand what that goes for. It's like an RBA, typical stuff. So let's go ahead and screw that back on because, um, yeah, um, I'm going to take the top off. I'm going to try to. There we go. All right. So there's that. So two post design, as you can see. You can see your wicking wells on both sides. It has grub screws on the inside. So we'll see if we got a grub screw if not, or a grub or Allen key. If not, fine. We'll clean this up with some alcohol because it did come from overseas. Even though it's from the UK, machining wise, it's impeccable. Like, I feel no sharp edges really on this. Um, we'll go over pros and cons later because as of what I'm seeing right now, there's already one con on it. But that's okay. So if you see, when you pull this out, this piece comes with it. Okay. So this is basically your 510 pin. So yes, it can come out and there's an insulator inside. But what it's designed to do is make contact to this so that way it can fire and ohm your coils. So there's the deck, the top cap. And then inside the baggie, you're going to get your airflow inserts. So you have different inserts. You have some additional, let's move it around. You have some additional uh, screws and O-rings. And let me open this up. And what I'm gonna do is pull this out with, with a pair of tweezers, because I'm gonna show you these inserts that you get with it. Okay, so there's one, there's two, I want to keep the O-rings inside and the grub screws. I don't need those. And here's three. All right. So there's your O-rings and grub screws. Set it off to the side. Set the tweezers back. So you have a wide open airflow insert right here. So this is going to be your wide open, what they call wide open airflow. Um, if I remember right, when they talked about this before, when they were about to do the release, this came in something like, I don't know, two. This is about three millimeters 2.5 three millimeters something like that based off my caliper yeah three millimeters inner diameter so what this does you take this throw your deck around that's always awesome and all you do is you set it on the inside of this that's pretty much all you do you just literally set it in and this is what make contact so you can then once this is sitting into whatever you got you can move this around to adjust to where you want it um, then the next one you get is more of your mouth to lung. So here you go, mouth to lung, straight up all day. And then you got one that's slightly a little bit more reduced. This is probably more around a two millimeter. Again, all you do is you set them in and then you can see your airflow right there. So that's basically what it is. I didn't get no tools. There's nothing underneath. So what that means is I'm gonna run over to the side of me and grab me a little tool for me to build this one with, unless this is one that'll work in front of me. Let me see. Is this too big or too small? Nope, it's perfect size. All right, so we got an Allen key right here. So, Allen key to bring the grubs up. There we go. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab me a Q-tip because um, I always do this, um, especially nowadays with alcohol is I wipe everything down with alcohol and to get inside of some of these things all you do is I run a q-tip of mine then I run around the base so I know the alcohol is getting it sides top piece and you see right there how I got that black ring out that's because it had some machine oil on it it's okay you know it's it's freshly made I mean what do you expect so there you go so just run it on there. So that's there's that. 
run it on the outside of this, clean it up. Alright, so the machine work on the inside of this looks pretty decent. It has a groove it looks like cut inside so where it's going to stop and where the o-ring will set inside but i think the machining could have been just a little bit better maybe but polishing wise on the outside looks good you can see some machine marks on the inside where the tool mark is right here so right there on the inside let's see if i can zoom this in so you can see it Right there, well, no, right there, you can see the tooling mark right there on the edges, on the edge, right, Jesus, I can get this in camera. All right, so right there, you can, it's, you can barely see it, but the camera just doesn't want to pick it up, but it's right there, that little lines, that's just a tooling mark. Um, it doesn't hurt anything. It just means it could have been, you know, smoothed out, smoothed out a little bit better, and that's pretty much it. Um, wiping it down, I got some dirt off of it. Okay, cool, whatever. It's what you expect when you do this. You know, this is why I spray everything down with alcohol. People are like, why don't you put it inside of a cleaner? Well, I haven't bought one yet, and I don't want one of the cheap ones. So I'll eventually get one. Um, but alcohol works good too because it actually breaks off the oils and everything that come with it. So there you go. There's that. Okay. So those are done. All right. So as far as the inserts go, just wipe them down, clean them up. There's that. Clean it up. All right. I think with this here, they could have done a little bit better with the machining on the inside of that larger one. Um, personally, um, because, uh, it's a little not perfectly rounded. That's about the only thing I say. So you get three inserts with it and that's pretty much it. Um, you could run it without, nope, can't run it without an insert because if you do that, well then you basically aren't going to get nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece, we're going to lock our mod because I'm using a DNA so it's locked up now going to put our base on the bottom of this alright make sure it's making contact so it is um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our deck we're going to screw down our deck Okay, let's come back out so you guys can see what I'm doing, okay?
Okay, so there you go. That's only sitting at 16 watts. Okay. On a 1.43 ohm build, this is a DNA 75, so it's a lot more. It's pretty accurate compared to running it on something else. Um, the build is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this into something, bring it back up on top, talk about it, give you my final thoughts and opinions on it, pros, cons, etc. It we will go from there. So until then, I'll see you back on top. So thank you. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the up top portion. Okay, so we did the down low. I kind of picked up a little bit, letting this thing soak in. I'm running it in my Fox billet box um, with some SSSP doors, which have the button cut out, some 30 Qs, and the Connor Mums Boro Bone Boro Boro Bone 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 Dogs and Harmony. No, the Bone Marrow um, tank. Um, with the middle insert, so basically like the two, two and a half mil insert they have, and I have had, I didn't have any issues. As soon as I put it in, bam, it picked up. The ohm it's reading at now is a 1.32 ohm, running it at 20 watts. The flavor is just amazing. I'm not getting any muting of the flavor right now. Like I packed it a little different than I did on when I played with someone's Exocet V1 because that one was a little bit different. This is set up on more of a restrictive direct lung um, setting and I'm watching the bubbles come through. <coughs> so Might take some more. Nope, there it's bubbling out in the back. So really easy to install, like very well designed like putting the chimney in from the top man it just went in just like that it, it was no problem at all no hardness to get it in um the insert um to put it in all you have to do is basically set your your boil to the side put your insert in take your boil tank set it down in boom you're done set it set the airflow where you want it if you want it more restrictive you turn it towards the front so that the air has to circulate around it um if you air, want the air to come straight through and come straight up, there you go. And that's what I did. This coil will probably settle down to about a 1.34 once it's done breaking in fully. Um, I'm only running at 3.9 amps. This is what I always talk to people about amps. And we'll go over a series on that later. Um... So I'm running 5.2 volts, which means I can crank this a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to 20, 21.5. Still an amazing vape. Um, like I'm way below threshold. So let's crank up to 25 watts. Let's just go to 25 watts. Just 24 and a half. Okay. Boom, there it is. Perfect flavor. <laughs> <coughs> Woo! That flavor, wow. Um, hands down, great. Okay, so pros and cons, real quick. All right, con, you didn't get a tool with the device an allen key to adjust the post head screws okay it does have grub screws so luckily you know most of us builders and everything we have those items everywhere they come in build kits they come in all kinds of stuff um three different inserts um 
I think is okay, but I think, you know, if somebody wanted to cater it a little bit more to them, um, I think you're maxed out with what they gave you, but maybe, you know, one more insert would have been nice. You know, I think the other one was a two mil, so it goes like two or 2.5 to three or something like that. Um, but that's, those are just subjective, you know, opinions on inserts because this definitely becomes a mouth to lung. If you really want this thing to be a mouth to lung vape, it's there for you. If you want to run a three millimeter coil inside of it and that big post, um, your airflow insert, you got it. It's all there for you. I run high built. I like it. That's what the mums borrow wide open. That's the wide open mums borrow the three millimeter or four millimeter inner diameter, whatever it is that he had the biggest one. It's just, just amazing flavor. Okay, so I have it in this right now, but I could have also opted to put it on the inside of this tank. As you can see, this is how it runs. The two tanks I know that are out in the market, there's I think a third one, I just can't think of the top of my head, it's called a Limelight, Limelight Arch Tank. And they come in two renditions, 24 millimeter and a 22 millimeter. The Throne Tank comes in a 22 millimeter with a 23 millimeter center section where you can fit any bridge inside without a problem. Big hands down, thumbs up to the Throne Tank because I don't need to go to a 24 millimeter in order to do the same thing I can do with a tank that's smaller and looks a lot more appealing. So that's just me. I never played with the arch, to be honest with you. So I don't know if there's any differences, you know, as far as airflow, how it's set up, etc. But as far as flavor goes on this, it's a wide open drip tip. So it's not like it's a reduced drip tip. Um, it's a D's tip. Very simple. I got a custom button on the back of it made by DPM Mods here in the Philippines out of Ultim. And uh, my own build, which is a 32 gauge wrapped in dual core wrapped in 36 gauge Nichrome 80, around six or seven wraps on a two and a half millimeter jig. And this thing puts out perfect restricted direct lung and amazing amazing flavor so i'm gonna say wow amazing the only real con i have on this there's nothing to grab your legs if you put your coil in if i would have took my coil and wrapped it the opposite way my coil leg would have shot out and i would have had it been there holding it so that would have been the only con maybe if they would have added a lip on there that would have been it other than that there is nothing wrong with this. It's perfect. I 100% recommend any billet box user to get one if you can. I got lucky and I got a hold of one. Big shout out to Solomon Martinez here in the Philippines who was able to get it. And I got it from him. And yes, it's brand new. was never used. This was the first build ever used inside of this Hellfire Exocet V2. So with that, I want to give a shout out to all the sponsors to our group of the Uncharted Vapors or Uncharted Vapors Facebook group, um, which you can like in the description on top. You can see my Facebook group link there. Um, when you go on there, just go ahead and uh, answer the questions and come in the group. We do a lot of giveaways here in the Philippines. Unfortunately, U.S. shipping is just not worth it for a lot of you guys. Um, but uh, let's see here. Um, The Uncharted Vapor on my social media page, like and follow it. I do updates when videos are coming, when events are coming, if I'm going to be on a show or whatever's coming up. All that's updated there, so help me out. Follow me there. My main sponsor, Artery uh, Philippines. Um, I do get uh, promoted sometimes through Dincot Distribution as well, which gets me linked up with some of these other companies. Um, so thank you for them as well for their support and help. Um, AAA Vape, you know, for uh, being on Tom Vape TV um, every Wednesday night. And, you know, we have my sponsor because I'm coming out with my own juice line, which is Hits and Chase. Raw materials and e-liquids here in the Philippines. Someone in the comments turned me on to go talk to them. But then I had one of our sponsors, Miss Annette Mejia from Burnout E-Liquids, 
put a good word in and now they sponsored me to help me out with my line to come here in the Philippines myself. So with that, you know, um, the things on the billet box, a shout out for is DPM Mods for the button on, t on the side of it. They did an amazing job out of Ulta making a button for my mod. Um, so that way it fired, you know, really nicely. You used to have a D's button, but it was worn out. Um, my own build. And big shout out to Hellfire for an amazing, amazing device. So I will link Hellfire's group in the description. If you get in, get on their list, and you can pick up one of these, I highly suggest it. They go for around $150, $180 for the Addy. Um, to me, it's well worth it over most Addies. Um, the only other one that I have, or other ones that I have, I have in stock. stock. <laughs> I'm not a store. <laughs> no, it would be like the Vape Snail, the Hair RBA, and the Zeta are my top ones and this is now i'm going to say my top one um as for all of them my second would be the hair rba then the zeta and the snail will be mixed so other than that i hope you enjoyed today's review big shout outs to everybody um thank you Solomon, for getting this out to me and uh, i'll catch you on the next review so this is josh wazi with the uncharted vapors and i'll talk to you next time